Damn, Python has so many jobs on Indeed. Wow, this syntax is so easy to write. It's like pseudocode. 33% of programmers use it? What? Yes, all this stuff sounds great, but in this video, I'm gonna tell you why I think you should not learn Python for your first programming language. I'm taking the gloves off in this video because your time as a new programmer is valuable for one simple reason. You're not getting paid to do this stuff and you're probably using your nights and weekends to learn. So I just want you to know what you're getting into with the Python path. Here's the simple fact. You can't look at a language in isolation, meaning you have to look at everything that goes around to getting a job with that language. That means the supplementary skills you need, the career landscape, and who you're competing with for jobs. And at the end of the day, if you're learning your first language, it's most likely to get a job, right? Okay, so let's look at what jobs actually use Python. And first off, Python is the language for both data science and machine learning, which is absolutely great if you wanna go for one of those. But bear in mind, this is not normal programming. And machine learning in particular is super competitive and requires a lot of auxiliary skills. On the other hand, you have data science, which is literally science. Sounds complicated because it is. More realistically, what a lot of people call data science is really a data analyst. So they're just using the models instead of building them from scratch. And there's nothing wrong with being a data analyst. It's a completely viable career path. But keep in mind, this is more of a support role. You're not going to be the one building the actual apps, more just analyzing the data. And if you're sold on that, definitely go for it. Outside of these two, the next biggest category is probably backend web development, which Python is definitely great for when you combine it with a framework like Django or Flask. And realistically, this is what most people learning Python are gonna go after. And to be fair, if you search for backend Python jobs, there are a lot that appear. But if you look somewhere like indeed.com and you actually read the description, there are a few harsh realities with this. Namely, that if you look a bit deeper, almost all backend jobs have the Python keyword in there because it will say one of or more of these languages. Unfortunately, that also means you're gonna be competing with C, Java, PHP, and more developers for those same jobs. Which is fine, but just bear in mind, if you only know Python and you're competing against someone who knows multiple languages, then it might be a bit harder for you. Okay, now that I'm warmed up, it's time to go a bit harder and take the gloves off. Here's where it gets a little rough because the other skills you need to be a backend developer are very complex, especially when you compare it to front end. Do you know about databases? Not just basic SQL queries and designing tables, but we're talking creating backups, scaling, Python ORMs, cap theorem, ACID compliance, when to use no SQL versus SQL, migrations. Databases is really its own whole field, college, class, and career, which you're gonna need at least a solid grasp of to realistically do backend development. Beyond that, you're probably gonna need security, how to deal with decryption, encryption, different encryption algorithms, just to make sure everything's secure end to end, different types of APIs, API design, and then actually knowing what your system health is through observability, monitoring, and logging. Then you will need to take the time to master these things. And as you hear them said out loud, HTML, CSS, JavaScript can start to sound like a cakewalk by comparison. For a long time, I got offended that people said web development is not real development because it's much easier. But now I realize that's actually a good thing when you're starting out for sure. Now, all this stuff I just talked about, you will be tested on those in interviews. And that's the next element is actually passing the interview. And these are gonna be a lot more data structure and algorithm focused, where some front end interviews are literally just gonna be you building an app. In fact, one I had was me just writing CSS. And this was for a six figure job. And before I end this roast, there's two more Python pills you need to take. If you wanna be a full stack developer, which is often expected of backend web developers, you're gonna to need to learn JavaScript anyway. And it doesn't go the other way because you can know just JavaScript and be full stack. And the final one is, if you can't already tell, I'm just not that big of a fan of Python in general because I think every other language does what it tries to do better. And yes, I have written production Python code, but let me say that at scale, Python applications absolutely start to fall apart because there's not strong typing. It's very easy to write bugs, not know what functions are accepting. Let's just say there's a reason for Java and Colang being used in larger organizations. There's stricter rules and patterns being enforced that make things harder to break and harder to write bugs. And if you've seen a thousand line plus Python file, you will know that it starts to look very messy with all the indentation, especially when you're indented 10 tabs deep. In other words, I've been to Python hell and back and you don't wanna go there. All this being said, is Python a bad language in general? No, there's a reason people still use it for things like scripting a lot at work. And the reason for that high number is likely that people are using Python in conjunction with another language they use because it is just the fastest way to write simple scripts or prototype backends. But when you look at why people are recommending it to beginners, it's more a function of the syntax being easy, which does not necessarily translate to that first job, especially because JavaScript is not that much harder. In other words, should you learn it for your first language, you already know the answer is no. Just take on a bit more of a challenge up front with JavaScript, go for your front end jobs. Then you can learn Python next and become full stack if you still wanna learn it at that point. Anyway, I'm ready for the Python hate in the comments and let me know if you think I'm right or if I'm wrong. See you in the next one.